WNBC.com, and that address is on your screen, where message boards have been posted. You can post a message on that board as a way to communicate with uh, someone if you can't get to a phone, uh, if you have problems communicating, that is a way we will help exchange information with our viewers. All right, Jim, uh, just uh, a little while ago, uh, we had a story by Michelle Marsh, uh, who couldn't make it to work today because of logistics and such. Uh, she did a story in the Bronx uh, about people's reactions and their trials and tribulations. And um, we have Michelle live now. Michelle, you're on. Hi, Sue. Yes, I live in Connecticut, and uh, when I came in this morning, um, I got as far as the 225th Street Bridge, which is behind me right now. It was closed off by the time I got here. It has been closed most of the day. It was reopened about an hour ago, and now, as you can see behind me, it's been closed once again. The streets of the Bronx are, are filled with a, a state of disbelief tonight, and all afternoon long, people have been telling me their incredible stories of how they got from the horror of Manhattan up here to the Bronx and beyond. As I mentioned in my report, the one in nine subway lines run right above me over here, and then Metro North has a Marble Hill station nearby, which is the Hudson Line. So this is a place for people to connect. And of course, today, it was to connect to what they thought would be a safe haven. I have heard incredible stories all day long. People have walked hundreds of blocks to get here to this train station in the Bronx. They have literally prayed for cabs and buses to arrive. They have hitchhiked. And when they ran up to our crew and asked, are the trains running? And we told them yes. There were smiles and tears over the thought of seeing their families again. Subway's here. I'll throw it back to you. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. You know, the United States now has sealed its borders with Mexico and with Canada. That's a security measure. We've done that uh, not to this extent. In fact, this is the first time in the history of our country that we have closed down all the airports as a security measure. Border to border, coast to coast. Uh, there has been no claim of responsibility that we know of yet for today's attacks. Palestinians, though, as Gabe Pressman observed earlier, staged anti-American victory celebrations in Jerusalem. I believe we have some videotape here we need to be looking at. And this is from the Middle East. Let's take a look at this sound up full for a second. Children and adults gathered at the Damascus Gate. Once word of this attack began to circulate in the area, the U.S. is widely viewed as an enemy because of its staunch support for Israel in the continuing Mideast conflict. However, we must point out the Palestinian President Yasser Arafat was among world leaders reacting with outrage and sympathy. First of all, I am offering my condolences, the condolences of uh, the Palestinian people to the, uh, to the American President, uh, President Bush, to his government, to the American people. We do not know yet who is behind these acts or what objective they hope to achieve. What we do know is that no just cause can be advanced by terror. This mass terrorism is the new evil in our world today. It is perpetrated by fanatics who are utterly indifferent to the sanctity of human life. And we, the democracies of this world, are going to have to come together to fight it together and eradicate this evil completely from our world. And that is the enduring question from today's events. What do the democracies of the world do to fight terrorism, to fight the faceless enemy? Difficult question. Well, you are watching Live at Five as we continue our coverage of the tragedy today, the attack on the tr World Trade Centers, the Pentagon uh, attack, and the crash of the uh, plane in Pennsylvania. Ralph Penz is here now to give us an overview of all of this. Let's just, let's just bring it all together then. The uh, timeline of these attacks show incredible coordination. Uh, they came from meticulous and elaborate planning by these people that the President of the United States has called uh, these well, cowards. Let me just interject yes. for a second. And we did learn that the President is going to speak tonight at some time. We don't know the time yet, and we don't know his location. It's being kept secret. 
uh, the point uh, where he will make, but he will address the nation this evening. That's right. Incident, not incidentally, we should say Vice President Cheney has been put into a secure location. Again, they're not sure how long all of this is going to uh, going to go on. So they, if if it's going to go on any further than this, as I was saying just a moment ago, it's obviously well coordinated, and it was the hijackers used planes as flying bombs. 8.42 a.m. on Election Day in New York City. A hijacked airliner is flown directly into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. As the horror of that crash flashes through the city, emergency units race to the scene of what many at first believe is an accident. But 22 minutes later, at 9.03, a second airliner plows into the South Tower. And now the world knows that New York and the nation are under attack. A terrorist attack so devastating it is being compared to Pearl Harbor. And it is not over. Just 37 minutes later at 9.40 outside Washington, still another hijacked airliner crashes into the Pentagon, the nerve center of the nation's military. One wing of the five-sided building collapses in flames. Back in New York at 9.59 a.m., the South Tower collapses. <laughs> then just 29 minutes later, the North Tower goes down. Upwards of 50,000 people normally work in the twin 110-story towers, possibly 20,000 of them inside today. Mayor Giuliani saying he expected an horrendous loss of life. This is a vicious, unprovoked, uh, horrible attack on innocent uh, men, women, and children. It's one of the most heinous acts, certainly in, in, in world history. Witnesses report seeing victims jumping from the towers. Hundreds were seen fleeing from the area of the building. I looked behind me and I saw the building look like it was coming in on itself, thinking to myself, I can walk faster than this. It just went boom, and then there was a whoosh of black smoke. Could see absolutely nothing. I think I was about as close to God as I've ever been. Then word comes in that a fourth hijacked jetliner that left Newark, New Jersey, has crashed some 80 miles north of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. What the hijackers had intended for that doomed plane, not yet known. President Bush speaks to the nation, vowing to bring the terrorists to justice. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward, Earth. and freedom will be defended. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. In Washington, the White House, the Capitol, the State Department, all are evacuated. Vice President Cheney is reportedly placed in a secure location as President Bush at that hour is expected to return to Washington. The nation goes effectively on a state of emergency. All airports closed, all planes in the air are ordered to land immediately at the nearest airports. The borders with Canada and Mexico sealed off. Governor Pataki orders New York State's own northern and western borders closed. The president's spokeswoman, Karen Hughes, sought to show that the administration was in control. And the president is in a secure location. He is in continuous communication with the vice president and key members of his cabinet and national security team. And at 5.20 tonight, World Trade Center building number seven, which had been evacuated earlier, collapsed. The 47-story building going down some eight hours after the Twin Towers were destroyed. Number seven impacted by the adjacent damage. Some 266 people died in the four hijacked planes that the terrorists used as weapons against this country. Of the two passenger jets that struck the World Trade Center, one was American Airlines Flight 11, the other United Flight 175. Another American Airlines plane was used to crash into the Pentagon. The plane that crashed 80 miles from Pittsburgh lifted off from Newark Airport. All four planes were en route to California. Folks. And Ralph, I have found out since we talked a moment ago that President Bush is scheduled to speak at 9 o'clock tonight. He will address the nation. Rob Morrison is standing by uh, in southern Manhattan, lower Manhattan right now uh, with the latest on the latest collapse. Rob? Well, Chuck, earlier we called it a burning wasteland, southern Manhattan, and uh, there really is no other way to describe it. If you take a look over my shoulder, you see the hundreds of uh, firefighters and emergency personnel who have gathered. It's tough to see through the smoke south of Chamber Street. There are still many fires burning down there. The southern skyline of Manhattan has been changed forever. The last collapse that you've, you're looking there at the gap where seven World Trade Center used to stand 
right now it's just a plume of smoke. I think right now you're looking at the tape of seven collapsing. It happened just a short time ago. Basically what happened was when the tower number one, which was the second collapse happened, it fell onto uh, world trade number seven. It did severe structural damage and it started an incredible fire on the southern part of that building and it burned out of control all day. There was so much structural damage done that firefighters and other emergency personnel were evacuated from the area. They weren't let in there and as the day wore on it became apparent that that building was so compromised that it was going to go over. It began leaning to the south right where that white plume of smoke is now. It began leaning to the south and then about an hour ago I guess it was the tape you just saw and the tape you're seeing again, World Trade Summer number seven, ironically where the Office of Emergency Management used to be when toppling over.